Welcome to Sheboygan County Government, working for you. My name is Adam Payne, Sheboygan County Administrator and co-host of this program with Mike Vandersteen, County Board Chairman. And today we're very pleased to have a very important department head with us, Sheriff Mike Helpke. Welcome, Mike. Thank you. As you know, every month we bring a different department to you, 22 departments in Sheboygan County, and our Sheriff's Department is clearly one of our most important and one of our largest. So we're looking forward to, to learning more from Sheriff Helmke today. But before we begin, I'd like to turn it over to Chairman Vandersteen to make a special presentation. Mike? Well, we've got a great crew we're working with here at TV8. And Fritz Zink, I'd like you to take your, uh, your mic off for a minute and please step over here in front of the fireplace. Fritz, we're waiting on you. <laughs> Fritz celebrated a very significant birthday. Uh, we want to honor him for that. And we also want to say thank you for all the work that he's done. So I've issued a special proclamation to Fritz. Whereas Fritz Zink has born, was born on July 3rd of 1920 to Otto and Anna Zink in Sheboygan, Wisconsin. And whereas Fritz married Veronica Miller on June 14th of 1947, together they raised three beautiful children, Terry Zink of Riverton, Wyoming, Vicki Meyer of Hartford, Wisconsin, and Jody Maslaka of Sheboygan, Wisconsin. Whereas he proudly served his great country in World War II in the United States Army as a paratrooper, and took part in historic battles such as the Battle of the Bulge and D-Day. Whereas he has been employed by the Sheboygan Press for more than 30 years and began employment with uh, TV8 Star Cablevision, now WSCS City of Sheboygan, as a cameraman in 1984, he remains a dedicated employee to this day, and for the past 26 years, he's been involved in covering high school events, sporting events, symphony concerts, telethons, coverage of two United States presidents, and hundreds of studio shows. And whereas Fritz is retiring uh, from the Sheboygan Press in 1986, allowed Fritz uh, to spend more time with TV8 and his favorite hobby, his own film business, referred to as Radiant Pictures. And whereas this most, uh, what is most important to Fritz and his family is his church. As a member of our serve Savior Lutheran Church, I, therefore, as Michael Vandersteen, Chairman of the County Board of Supervisors, join the WSCS staff and his family in celebrating, congratulating Fritz Sank on his 90th birthday. Congratulations, and thank, thank you, you for all you've much. done for the community. <laughs> there you go, Fred. Okay, and thank you again. Now we'll need you behind a camera to finish the show. Okay. <laughs> thank you much. Well, very nice. Something we haven't done before. I was, I was sharing with Mike Kelmke just before the program started. I think we've done over 100 programs, uh, maybe closer to 150. I lose track. And Fritz has, Fritz has been behind the camera, I think, for nearly every program. Uh, Steve over my right shoulder, you know, Scott's running the show inside, and, and uh, it's just real nice to acknowledge somebody like Fritz. 90th birthday, and uh, he's always here and always doing a good job. Thank you so much, Fritz, and thank you, TV8, for the work you do. That's all the time we have for our program today. So, <laughs> Sheriff Helmke, thanks for joining us now. <laughs> so with that, back to Sheriff Helmke. Uh, Mike, please begin by sharing with our viewers your law enforcement career a little bit, when you started and when you were first elected sheriff. Sure, um, I started with the Sheriff's Department in February of 1978, so I have well over uh, 32 years with the department. And I was first elected sheriff in uh, November of 2002, beginning my first term in January of 2003, and then re-elected as sheriff uh, for a term that began in 2007. Currently up for re-election this fall for a term that will start uh, January of next year. And you started with the Sheriff's Department, as you said, 32 years ago. You pretty much know this department inside and out with your experience, do you not? I, I do. Uh, I've worked in every uh, aspect and as, uh, asset of the, of the department. I've um, started, I worked in corrections. I worked my way uh, in, into patrol. I was a field training officer, a first line supervisor sergeant, a middle manager as a lieutenant, uh, shift commander, and uh, eventually was elected sheriff. Very good. And I think most of our viewers have a pretty good understanding of the importance of law enforcement in the Sheriff's Department, but how would you describe the primary role or responsibility of the Sheriff's Department? Well, a sheriff is uh, constitutionally mandated to provide uh, specific services uh, for the county in which they serve. Um, one of those services is, is a jail that I just mentioned, um, which is a huge part of our operation. It comprises more than half of our employees and more than half of our budget. 
Um, when I started at the Sheriff's Department, I mentioned I started in corrections at that time. The jail was on the sixth floor of the courthouse, just above the county board chambers. And uh, if we had 35, 40, 40 inmates in j jail on any given day, we were getting to the point of being maxed out. Flash forward 32 years, we have three freestanding correctional facilities and a daily uh, population of anywhere between 275 and 290 inmates in jail on any given day. And it's rather remarkable, as you know, if you go to the sixth floor of the courthouse, we've got the county board chambers on the fifth floor, which is a, a nice chamber room. I, I think it, it might be due for an upgrade at some point. The, the chairs have, are probably about 50 or 60 years old, <laughs> but it's a beautiful view of the lake. But apparently they thought the prisoners must have, at that time maybe a view wasn't so important because above that, the, the jail, and, and now it's storage for sure. the courthouse. And uh, they, they really didn't have access to a view of the, of the lake. Um, <laughs> it was uh, pretty antiquated sure. uh, by the time we left um, back in uh, the early 80s when we opened the law enforcement center to the south of the courthouse. But in addition to the jail, uh, the sheriff is also required to uh, provide courtroom and courthouse security. And we do that with our, in our court services division through our bailiffs. Uh, also in that division, we serve civil process, which is also a mandated service of the sheriff. In addition to that, the sheriff is required to provide for um, the um, regulation and tra of transportation and storage of explosives and hazardous materials, and we do that through our emergency government division of our department. Uh, and then, of course, there's uh, the um, law enforcement public safety aspect of, uh, of uh, law enforcement that we provide to the general community. Se nearing the end of your second four-year term, uh, you've seen a lot during your tenure, certainly 32 years on the force. As sheriff, what have been some of your biggest challenges and some of your greatest accomplishments? Sure. Uh, the challenges uh, now, obviously, with the economic situation and its effect on uh, local and uh, state and federal government budgets, for that matter, um, is a real big challenge. As you know, we're um, currently um, in the process of developing our 2011 budget, and we have some major challenges there in order to uh, meet that budget target that we were given by the county board. Uh, jail overcrowding, I, I mentioned before, uh, the number of individuals that we have in jail on any given day, we're to the point that we're well over 80 to 85 percent capacity in our corrections areas, and uh, that's uh, the point where uh, the experts in the industry say you need to start looking at either re, uh, 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 building an addition or maybe doing something in terms of alternatives to incarceration. So we're looking at this as a multi-prong approach. We've had estimates on Jail, uh, jail expansion, we're looking at alternatives to incarceration, so we have a number of different things going on in that area. That's clearly going to be a challenge. And just the changing landscape of the criminal justice system over the years and into the future with technology and um, the different things, the different types of um, avenues that that brings to the criminal element out in the community. Uh, just staying on top of those types of things is a science in and in of itself. Those are certainly some key challenges that are ongoing. What about accomplishments? What are some things you're sure. really proud of? Um, I'm, I'm very proud to say that uh, when I ran for sheriff and then when I was reelected, every, every uh, campaign platform that I had uh, expressed and that I had campaigned on, I, I accomplished. But uh, just to mention some of them, uh, I've underspent my budget in, in the last eight years uh, cumulatively by uh, nearly $1 million. We've generated $2.7 million in state and federal grants. I've reorganized the department a couple of different times. We implemented wireless 911 mapping. I reinstituted the uh, canine unit. We currently have three canines in our department. Um, I re, uh, reinstated the special deputies who serve as school aid, uh, security officers, assistance to the uh, Sheboygan police officers in the uh, Sheboygan area school district. I instituted a inmate work camp program whereby inmates um, can go out and work at different uh, either governmental um, jobs or um, work for nonprofits and, and volunteer in those areas in exchange for uh, credit given off of their uh, sentence. Um, and I've partnered with uh, the Sheboygan County Fire Chiefs Association to um, place detectives in their fire investigative unit, uh, as well as uh, we have a partnership with the Humane Society uh, in investigating animal uh, uh, neglect and abuse type of situations, which um, can always sometimes be in a very emotionally charged thing with the community. We've had issues with um, alleged puppy mills and other types of animal neglect that 
really get the attention of the community, and um, they are sensitive types of crimes that need to be uh, thoroughly investigated. I know you've got a real good team in place. Uh, we're both very proud of what the Sheriff's Department continues to do, the excellent service that's provided. And um, when you think about your team, whether it's at the management level or the patrol officers, uh, please give our viewers a sense of how many employees do you have and what kind of budget does it take to support that organization? Sure, we have approximately 180 employees. Um, about uh, 90 of those are um, sworn, the other 90 uh, approximately are civilian. So we have a, a mix of civilian and um, sworn uh, employees. Our budget is, uh, uh, this year's budget is uh, $16.8 million. And um, it's, a, it's a huge operation. It uh, requires uh, a, a lot of uh, work. Um, we have our department divided up into four different uh, divisions. The Corrections Division, which I, we've talked about already. Um, the Court Services Division I, I, I touched upon before. We also have a Criminal Investigations Division. Those are detectives that go out and work uh, major crimes and um, follow up on other types of crimes that are maybe too um, time involved for a deputy to handle. And then we have our Patrol Division, which is our, our deputies that are first responders to emergencies and uh, uh, crimes. Very good, nice overview, thank you. Mike, as you know, we've got a lot of uh, activities that happen in Sheboygan County during the summer months, uh, Road America, a lot of uh, community picnics and things like that. And also this year, we have a real special event. We, we're, we're hosting uh, the PGA uh, for the second time in Sheboygan's history. And I was wondering uh, if you could give us a little picture on, on what your department has to go through to handle a, a major event like a PGA out at Whistling Straits. Sure. Um, in addition to the PGAs that you uh, had mentioned in 1998, we really got our first stab at the Professional Golf Association with the, uh, P, uh, with the uh, U.S. Women's Open that was held at Black Wolf Run, which was a little different dynamic because that was down in the village of Kohler, and now we're at Whistling Straits with the PGA Championship. But... Um, there's a lot of planning involved in putting something like this together, a planning for traffic security, uh, fire, EMS communications, uh, disaster preparedness and planning in the event that uh, you would have a, uh, a weather-related emergency or something of that nature. Um, so there, there's an awful lot of planning that takes place and a lot of different players that are involved in this planning process and ultimately a lot of different partnerships that make this thing come off from our perspective. Mike, uh, could you give us a little bit of an idea on how maybe this event differs from uh, the work that you do for the Sheboygan County Fair or Road America type event? Sure. Uh, this is unique in that this is more of a uh, public, private sector venture. Uh, the PGA and the, the Kohler Company are the sponsors of this event, um, and we as the uh, the public sector provide um, all of the security, the traffic, and the emergency planning part of it. So some of the uh, partners that are involved in this are the uh, Brown County Bomb Squad, the FBI, ATF, um, the Coast Guard, the DNR, the Department of Transportation, the Wisconsin State Patrol, local law enforcement agencies in Sheboygan County, the fire departments, the, the ambulance services, and even our Sheboygan County Health Department is involved because of all of the food and vendor uh, things that go on up, up there. So. There are a lot of players in this that have to come together in, uh, in a unified way to uh, make this thing work. Is there any uh, other funding that you're able to garner to, to assist you in providing uh, these resources for this event? Yes, uh, we've, we've been fortunate. Uh, uh, the first uh, championship in 2004 and this one this year where we've had an agreement from the State Department of Administration to reimburse the counties for our deputies over time that's specifically related to the PGA Championship. And we're looking at um, a reimbursement of approximately $110,000 for this year's event. That's great, and we really appreciate the work you're doing to, to make this a safe event and really represent Sheboygan County well. Switching gears a little bit, I know that your department offers um, um, police protection or sheriff's uh, services to some of our local townships and, and villages if requested. Could you tell us a little bit about how that works? Sure, we've been uh, doing that for quite a few years, um, providing additional law enforcement presence in the villages of Random Lake, Oostburg, Cedar Grove, uh, Glen Beulah, and the town of Holland. Uh, what what this partnership brings to the village is uh, we can uh, enforce their local ordinances. We will um, pay attention to specific issues that they may have uh, that they want us to, to watch. And it brings in a, 
it's, it's basically a cost neutral venture for the sheriff's <coughs> department. So the advantage is that we're not, we're, not, uh, we're not dipping into our budget to provide this, but in the other advantages is that we have additional law enforcement officers out there in the event that we need them. It's a great partnership. Great. Mike, do you have any other particular areas of concern or, uh, esc or you see escalating uh, needs for law enforcement in our community? I mentioned some of the, the things before, the uh, advent of the internet and uh, technology and how uh, criminals are using the internet to either prey on children or the elderly or what have you. We have uh, continued uh, issues with uh, drugs and, and gang issues in the community that we have to uh, stay proactive with and, and uh, I think we are, we're doing a good job of, of that. Um, the jail overcrowding I had mentioned before and um, the budget situations are I think some of the most challenging things that we collectively will have to uh, work on together in the future. Sounds great. Thanks for sharing those. I'll turn it back over to Adam. A lot of emphasis, you know, on sharing services with other units of government. As long as I've been in this position the last 11 years, and I'm sure you're 32 years on the force, you know, you're always hearing from constituents, how can we share services with other units of government, uh, keep taxes in check, things of that nature. And a lot is going on behind the scenes between the Sheriff's Department and the Police Department, City of Sheboygan Police Department, as well as the other units of government, as you know. Most recently, the City Common Council, the Sheboygan County Board, authorized the sheriff and, and, and all the law enforcement ju jurisdictions really to go forward with this computer-aided dispatch records management system, CAD RMS, as we mm -hmm. refer to it. Uh, some of our viewers may have uh, noticed that in the paper recently that the county board just passed that. What is it? Why is it important for law enforcement? Well, we currently have a CAD RMS system in place now, but that's an antiquated uh old technology Windows-based system that um, uh, just doesn't allow us to upgrade and to stay up with uh, technology advancements that will actually make us more efficient and uh, make our officers do more with less. Uh, so we're looking at this new uh, system which is going to be provided by Spillman Technologies out of Utah and it's a legacy system. There are 60 agencies in Wisconsin that currently use the system uh, they have a very, very good reputation. Um, as you know, uh, we had an ad hoc committee that worked over two and a half years on exploring this, did their due diligence, um, and really went out of their way to um, find what I think uh, is just a, an excellent system that will take us years into the future in terms of those capacities in our computer-aided dispatch and records management area, um, and just enhance our ability to be more proactive in tracking crime, mapping crime, um, having data more instantaneously available to the deputies out on the street, and uh, things like that. So it's a, it's a technology advancement that is, um, time has come. And when you mentioned ad hoc committee, ad hoc committee made up of uh, staff from the Sheriff's Department, from our Information Systems Department, as well as the City Police Department and, and IS Department. Right. And you know, as you, you did a nice job describing that. What would be a specific example or two where that's going to help a, a, uh, an officer on the street? Or sure. Uh, well, it'll help the officer on the street in in an, in a way that they'll have uh, information more readily available to them. Current information. Right now, we have backlogs in our system because we have redundancy and uh, multiple times uh, information has to be uh, entered into our system, which delays it. This system will allow information to be actually entered into the database instantaneous when the officers are, are dealing with the people. If they have a driver's license, we can swipe the driver's license with the barcode on it. That information's in there, readily available to an officer that may be working the next shift and have contact with this person. You'll know that you've had contact with this person and under what circumstances. So to the officer on the street, there's the, that advantage. I mentioned the from a clerical standpoint and um, entering information now physically into a system where the system itself can collect that information and put it in the, the proper database. It's kind of like a wheel and you have all the different spokes going out to these different areas. We have, we have um, a database for our corrections. So inmate information will be available. Information from our civil process will be in, uh, available. Information from the other law enforcement agencies in the county will be available to all of the officers um, at any given time. Excellent. And as you mentioned, a system we're already sharing, 
but is becoming a dinosaur. It's time to improve upon it. This will significantly improve upon it, really an investment for law enforcement. Other examples of uh, where the Sheriff's Department is sharing resources with the City Police Department sure. or other law enforcement agencies. Um, as you know, we have a, a shared uh, 800 megahertz radio system, which is a backbone for all communications in Sheboygan County, whether it be DPW, Highway Department, Transit, Police, Fire, EMS. That backbone is there. We're heads and shoulders above other, uh, ahead of other counties that have multiple radio, uh, communication systems in their county. We have that singular backbone, and uh, that, that's been around uh, for, for quite some time, and that was a, a great um, effort on the part of the city and the county and everybody to get together to, to implement that. Uh, we have a shared photograph uh, system, shared fingerprints. We sh uh, the MEG unit, our drug enforcement unit, mm -hmm. is a collaborative effort with uh, law enforcement agencies, primarily the police department and the sheriff's department, but the other law enforcement uh, agencies in the county also contribute to that effort. Our canines are uh, in, in uh, use of uh, special type of investigative services are available to go back and forth to either any department for that matter if um, if that need is is there we back up each other with our SWAT team our special weapons and tactics teams and, and things like that joint investigative uh, uh, services are available so the, our, our dive team is a uh, is a shared team made up of members from both the police department and the in the sheriff's department so there are many and there, there are more that will probably go uh, go for in the future as and that's quite a list as as you think about the good things that are currently in play, and there are a number of them, always opportunities for improvement. Uh, do you envision any, is there anything else there you're hoping to accomplish that will be shared in the future or, or make your job, your officer's job more efficient? Sure. Um, actually, we are in a process right now of obtaining a grant collectively between the city and the, the county to uh, buy a total station. That's a GPS type measuring system that can be used for accident or crime scene investigation. So we're, we're going through that collectively and hopefully then we'll have a team of uh, trained officers because it takes a high level of training to be able to do this type of work and uh, they will be able to share that instead of each having their own and maybe utilizing it in a moment only a handful of times a year. Uh, our uh, ditch, dispatch center uh, is an area that uh, the Shared Services Committee has taken a look at. Um, one of the areas that I think um, we're, we're probably going to maybe look at next to potentially bringing together and combining, uh, there was quite a uh, co concerted effort or thought process that took place while the police department was building their new police department as to whether or not we should join our communication centers instead of having two independent centers have one. And uh, that, that, that issue was uh, fairly well vetted and discussed. Uh, there's you know, obviously a need for a backup center. Uh, so even though there are two independent centers now, it doesn't mean that we can't come together and maybe collaborate and have one in the future. And you mentioned dispatch center, and as you said, a lot of discussion for a couple few years there. And, and ultimately the city common council, the county board said, let's establish a joint dispatch officer and I know with the tight budget constraints that everyone's feeling, that's going to be in play as part of the overall discussion. But it was a, going to be another incremental step forward to the, the city and county. Ultimately, I think having one dis dispatch center, which will mm -hmm. provide a more effective service for the community. What is the status of that? What, what are the, the thoughts right now with that joint dispatch center in, or joint dispatch officer? Well, we, uh, we're, we're moving forward with the... Uh probably an application process and some type of um, interview process to uh, hire a, joint, uh, a communication center manager. Mm -hmm. And um, I think the timing is, is good for that because we, we just, just discussed we're moving forward with this new CAD RMS and you're gonna need a point person that, that'll be able to work between the two agencies now with that. And I, I think that this may be a step in, in the direction to ultimately combining the two dispatch centers under the uh, management of this um, dispatch center manager. Right, right. And earlier this year, there were 
you know, as was discussed throughout the process, right now when someone makes a phone call, it, it can sometimes trigger two people having to be part of conveying that rather than one. And if we have a joint operation that could stream like that or take one step out of the process, isn't that correct? That, that's, that's correct. Anytime you have to relay information either by transferring a call or just picking up a phone and relaying it yourself, you have the possibility of uh, information being misinterpreted, misunderstood, um, lost altogether, and uh, that will take that concern out of the, out of the uh, component, as well as, uh, you know, in, in most emergencies, time is of an essence. So the quicker you can get the information and dispatch the resources, the better off we all feel and the more success we would have with the situation. Only have a couple of minutes remaining. Um, obviously, you're starting or in the midst of a re-election campaign. You've talked about your experience and, and obviously your knowledge of the Sheriff's Department. A lot of good things have happened during your tenure. As you look ahead, uh, if you're re-elected uh, Sheriff, what do, you, what do you hope to do? What are some of the key goals you have ahead as you look forward? Well, um, I'd like to uh, see through this uh, computer-aided dispatch. Uh, this is gonna be probably a 10-month process. Uh, so I would definitely wanna keep on top of that. Um, I had mentioned uh, the uh, sharing of the accident reconstruction team. I think this is another area that we can come together and share with the police department. Um, I've built a lot of collaborative efforts with uh, other uh, law enforcement agencies, the uh, U.S. Marshals, ATF, and uh, that, that has never been done before uh, in, in the Sheriff's Department in the time I was there uh, for various reasons. And uh, I look at it that uh, I am not in competition with uh, other law enforcement agencies. We are, in, um, we, are, we are together in trying to meet the mission of public safety. So um, partnership building in that is probably something I'm going to continue to pursue. Um, just uh, tr trying to uh, keep control of this uh, jail overcrowding issue is going to be a, a huge task ahead for who's ever sheriff. And uh, just a, a, a number of different things out there that uh, need to be uh, looked at and you need the leadership and uh, the, the uh, ability to, to do that. Well, Sheriff, thank you for your years of service and your ongoing leadership and certainly that of your staff. You've got an excellent department and a lot of people making good things happen and we thank you for that. I would agree. And thank you for joining us. On behalf of the Sheboygan County Board and Chairman Mike Vandersteen, it was a pleasure as always to have you with us today. Next month, we're going to have the Human Resources Director here, Mike Collard. We're going to be starting the process again of renegotiating eight contracts with 89% of our employees, bargaining unit contracts, and, and there's a lot involved with that, a lot of good people who are seeking give and take, and as the sheriff alluded to earlier, uh, budget constraints right now are real, and certainly the, uh, those, that negotiation process is going to be an important part of our future success. So until next month, again, thank you for joining us.